have another meeting where we can invite the local residents to attend. Um, so I asked that if we can host another meeting. And so um, Larry Cole from the Residents Association kindly accepted that we would have one at this church. And thank you to the Green World Church for allowing us to have this meeting. So, and thank you for coming out. And so, it's so important to come out to these consultation meetings because it gives the staff me an idea on what the, um, what the community is thinking and what their ideas are. So uh, tonight the uh, city staff will be doing a presentation and then following the presentation then we will open up for questions and I believe that there's some boards at the back at the end you can go up and give your comments on exactly the streets and uh, what you support or not support. Now I'm going to um, pass it on now to Larry. He's the chair of the uh, Residents Association. And thank you, Larry, for allowing us to host this meeting this evening. If you could say a few words. Thank you, Francis. Uh, again, as Francis said, I'd like to thank uh, Greenboro Community Church here uh, that uh, kindly uh, is allowing us to use this space. This church has been here since the early 50s, and uh, so we work with Greenville Community Church, Greenville's Community Association, uh, just to host some public meetings like this. So uh, we wanted to hear from city staff uh, proposing this, and, get, and hopefully uh, we can get uh, your comments on it. And uh, also wanted to, uh, I'll, I'll go over to the side, if you want these signs, uh, these are uh, slow down signs from the city of Toronto. Uh, Francis's office, security office, at Keel and Ingram has them. If you would like to put them on your lawn or property, uh, you know we have some on Greenbrook and various streets. So if you need some signs, just tell uh, Audrey at the back who works with, uh, with Francis, all right? So I'm just going to, again, thank you the staff for also the city staff for coming and everybody for attending tonight. So I'll just pass it on to the city staff now. Good evening everyone. Thanks so much for coming out. My name is Kenny Fontaine. This is Cyan. You can say his last name. Sivapata Sundara. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rachel Antishin. So uh, last time we came out, uh, one of the main questions that I had at the end of my presentation was, uh, or comment was, uh, I'm not sure you're pronouncing this street name correctly. Uh, so I'm not sure if I'm supposed to say Trethaway, so please correct me <laughs> if I'm saying this wrong. Uh, so I've been saying the so I'm getting some nods, I'm going to stick with that, but uh, I know some people in the community pronounce it different ways. Um, so as the councillor mentioned, uh, we were out in the, uh, in the community in June, uh, so this is the same presentation. So this is part of the first phase of consultation, uh, just to receive feedback about opportunities, any concerns, uh, really for us to learn about uh, the community and uh, opportunities for uh, what could be included in the, the design for um, the Chetumi Drive complete suite. Uh, then, uh, based on the feedback we received, uh, we will come back to the community with a phase two consultation where we will present uh, different designs, different options, uh, and uh, we will reach out to receive further feedback uh, about what is proposed. So, um, a bit of the project overview. Uh, we have the city of Toronto, the, 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 the Street is, is being proposed from Jane Street all the way to Edlington. So it's all of the three drive. Uh, and complete streets are really um, an opportunity to enhance uh, road safety and accessibility. Uh, they are for all road users. Uh, they are for people driving, people cycling, uh, people walking for all of the road users. Uh, and um, the, the street is about two and a half kilometers long, and it's a really key um, connection between uh, what we're seeing at the north, with, which is the Western Cycling Connections. Uh, we saw uh, the, the phase one construction has, has occurred. Uh, there will be further consultation for phase two, uh, and there is also a phase 
three, so uh, lots of connections towards the north. And um, I'm sure you're also aware that there's the Eglinton today, uh, so the connections all the way on, on Eglinton, connecting uh, the light rail transit stations on that street. <coughs> So um, this was uh, um, identified in the site network near-term implementation plan uh, for installation uh, in 2022-2024, uh, and there has been some delays. So uh, it will not consultation starting in 2024, but installation will not start until next year. Um, this project is not tied to any major road work. So uh, we are talking about a quick build um, installation. And so with quick build, uh, we use temporary materials. So it's a good way to test um, and new designs, new configurations for the, for the, the road. Uh, and when there is major road work, then uh, we'll have tested and we can make improvements, see what worked, what didn't work, uh, and these can be adjusted. So the materials that we typically use are uh, you know, the, the line markings on the road. Uh, we use barriers, so we want to make sure that um, people who are cycling and walking have that separation. Uh, so physical separation with forwards, uh, curb stones, or um, low walls uh, would be used on a corridor such as this. Um, and uh, there are some opportunities to do some small civil work. So uh, it's not that we cannot do any civil work, but because there's no major um, road, uh, you know, there's no uh, drum water coming to do water main throughout the whole corridor, and the street will not be all ripped out. This would be a very quick uh, installation that would only take a few weeks. Uh, and and as I said, it's uh, with, with temporary materials. So um, if there are essential uh, connections that we want to make, uh, or if there's really something that is a uh, key to get the, the project constructed, then uh, we will consider some uh, small civil interventions. So uh, the goals that we have um, set out for this project is, is really to improve safety uh, on, on the corridor. Um, so um, that's for all, all people, as I mentioned. Uh, we really want to encourage cycling uh, by connecting and improving the bikeways. So um, we, we know that there's not a huge network in the area, but there is a great gap in, in this uh, community. Uh, to, to really better connect uh, with Eglinton today that's coming. There's the Silverthorne connections that's coming. So, you know, if you're li living in um, the, the Western community, you'll be able to make your way all the way downtown in a, in a, in a safe manner. And so, um, there are planned uh, roadway projects in the area, uh, so there is some coordination that needs to be done. Uh, so they're, they're listed here. As I mentioned, Eglinton is uh, ongoing. There's um, can, uh, some consultation for the Jane uh, Racket TO that's happening, uh, the Western Cycling Connections, and uh, there will be some road work on Trinity Drive in a few years. So uh, right now it's currently planned for 2028. Uh, things often change, uh, but that is the, the current plan for major road resurfacing on Trinity Drive. So, um, you know, in, in the next year or so, testing out a configuration will be a great opportunity before this major road work happens in 2028 or later. Uh, and so uh, this is a slide about how decisions are made. So uh, there's always um, three major components that, uh, that, the, that staff can, uh, uh, need to assess to be able to make decisions. So public input, uh, Thanks to you, we uh, learn about community and your community, and learn and, and really uh, your your impact, your the feedback that we receive is really critical to uh, improving these projects. Uh, we don't live here, uh, or sometimes we do live in the communities that we work in, but uh, none of us live uh, at the heart of, of Trinity, uh, and so your social feedback is really essential um, to help um, um, make the design great. Uh, there are city policies and programs that we, uh, our staff need to rely to. Uh, and so Transform TO, uh, Climate Action Strategy, Vision Zero, um, and the Second Network Plan are uh, things that um, dictate uh, the, 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 the way we work uh, and why we're here. Uh, and um, there are technical requirements. So 
Uh, sometimes there are limitations. Uh, sometimes the roadway is super narrow, and uh, you know there's there's not a ton that we can do. Uh, but it's still really important that, to speak with the community so that uh, we can make the best on the corridor that we have. Uh, we, there is some width, so there are different options uh, that, that we are looking at, uh, depending on what the community's preference is. So, um, this says we are here, so uh, this was a presentation from June. Uh, we are transitioning into the second phase uh, of, of uh, the project. Um, so, as I said, general co consultation for the first phase. The second phase will focus on uh, feedback on, on the designs. Um, based on that feedback, there will be detailed uh, design. And uh, if all goes well, this would uh, be going to council uh, in early 2025. If it is uh, adopted by council, then a an installation. We don't really call it construction because there's no major digging or anything. It would be uh, temporary materials would be happening in the summer of 2025. So why consider change? As I mentioned, a bunch of policies. I won't go through all of these, but I'm happy to discuss these one-on-one -on -one with you. Uh, you know, the, the visual plan, Vision Zero, these complete street guidelines, all of these things really guide our work. Um, a few key things to, to note. Uh, the Vision Zero Road Safety Plan, you can see that um, on the left-hand side are the kilometers of roadway, uh, and the red line shows uh, fatal collisions by roadway classification. And you can see uh, in the little, the, the second column is arterial roads, which is what two three drive is. And there is a, uh, a, a lot more fatal collisions on these types of roads. It's imbalanced with the number of kilometers that we have in the city, uh, but just the speed and the volumes that we have on these types of streets, unfortunately, results in some fatal collisions. Um, and just the way they're, they're currently designed. Uh, so there are improvements to, to be made uh, on these types of roads. Um, and Transform TO, uh, the goal is for 75% of school and work trips under five kilometers to be uh, made by active transportation. So by that we mean walking, biking, or taking transit. Um, so this were our uh, council approved um, policies. So uh, a bit of uh, background on why G3 Drive was selected. So um, our team, uh, Cyan and I, work in the Cycling and Pedestrian Projects Unit. Uh, there is a team of planners who uh, work on the Cycling Network Plan. And so for that, they assess uh, uh, many categories to be able to determine which one on the map will become part of the Cycling Network Plan. And our, our role is to consult the public to figure out how to best build this uh, and how to install it uh, and what the design will be. So um, uh, you can see that one of the reasons uh, why, why this street was, was selected uh, is that, well, um, there's 85% of people driving exceed the posted ski limit, uh, which is, uh, I, I'm not sure if that's, that's it's just not a great scenario where we have a, a 50 kilometer speed limit and people going above that. We know that uh, if, when, when you're going at high speeds, uh, the higher the speed, uh, the more tragic the collision uh, will be. Um, and so uh, that's the summary of this slide. Um, there's uh, too many collisions on, on this roadway. Uh, we, we have have drawn out in the last decade uh, over 1,300 collisions uh, and have listed the, 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 the serious injuries and, and fatalities on the corridor. There's also um, equity is, is part of the, the rationale for um, selecting uh, the, this corridor. So you can see the neighborhood improvement areas. There are, are many um, in the, the vicinity, uh, so not everyone um, has the opportunity or has the this, this, this same access uh, to uh, proper transportation. Uh, there is uh, um, transit in the area and that will continue to improve. Um, 
cycling is uh, is another uh, mode, uh, another option for for uh, for people to use, and uh, a very affordable uh, and easy way to get around if you have the same option. Lots of uh, places to connect to, and you can see on the left-hand side is a map that shows the, the gap in the area uh, that, that is not connected to the, the bikeways, and um, you know, the, the, the goal is to really provide that connection. Uh, and lots of transit opportunities, as I said. So just a few highlights of the um, um, things that we are looking at on the corridor. So there are major intersections that are uh, that um, um, I think could, could really uh, benefit from improvements. Uh, the, the Black Creek intersection has very heavy turning volumes, uh, it has very long uh, crossing distances, very challenging as a pedestrian. There are obstacles uh, in the, the middle of, of the crossings, uh, the median is sticking out there. Uh, so something like this is something that we can look at as a, an essential a small civil uh, intervention. Uh, there's also the slip lane, uh, which is a concern. Uh, so we talked about you know, looking at having a, a stop and a, 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 um, a, a crosswalk, uh, which doesn't currently exist there. Um, and then just showing another view at uh, Eglinton, uh, Jubilee, and your road. Um, Oh, there's a lot going on there, uh, lots of challenges, but uh, we have traffic engineers who are looking at that uh, intersection. Uh, combined with the work that's happening on the uh, today, uh, making sure that the, the, this intersection flows well and also uh, is uh, respectful of anything that would be added to the intersection. So if the bikeway were to go through here, uh, that everyone is safe and uh, that everyone has a space and uh, that the movements are, are all uh, protected safely across the intersection. And just a few other images of um, a neighborhood, uh, the narrow sidewalks, the uh, bike share has, has come to the area. Um, there's uh, yeah, people riding on, on the sidewalk and uh, that obstruction that I was talking about at Black Creek. Uh, just quickly, the existing cross sections. Um, there is a small segment between Paulson and your road where there is off peak parking. Uh, we have done a survey in the of, of uh, parking use. Uh, it, it does not seem like it is tremendously used, but we would love to hear feedback from the community about that. Uh, because if we do not need to uh, maintain that parking, that, that provides opportunities for other uses. So a little bit about the Complete Streets approach. So um, for many decades in the city of Toronto, uh, there was a center line out kind of approach, thinking of how much space does the car uh, need and people driving need. Uh, and the Complete Street approach tries to consider all, all of the users. Uh, so we want to make sure that people can move, uh, people who are driving, people who are cycling and walking. Uh, all of this really helps with uh, public health and safety. It, it also has economic uh, um, development. Um, uh, uh, po it's positive for economic development, uh, where you know, people are not just going through from point A to point B. Uh, it's a pleasant walk, a pleasant uh, place to go sit uh, and have a coffee. It really uh, benefits the, the businesses in the area. Uh, and also improves the, the environmental quality and just the livability li and uh, equity in the area. Um, I, I mentioned this um, that you know there are high speeds and high volumes in the area, uh, so we, we follow guidelines when we um, determine which type of, of uh, bikeway facilities to propose on a corridor, and so uh, you can see that there are uh, two different. Um, speed limits, uh, which um, you know, we would also love to hear from you uh, about a, a potential reduction. So it, it, uh, part of it is 40 kilometers, and the other uh, segment is 50 kilometers. Uh, you know, bringing that down to 40 kilometers the whole way uh, could be something that we could do through the, through this project. Uh, one way or another, um, that that 40 kilometer speed limit does equal uh, physically separated uh, bike lanes. So you know. It really requires uh, a, a 
physical separation. Um, it's not just a painted line. <coughs> so uh, make sure that all ages and abilities can use this facility, or else people will not feel will, will not feel comfortable using this. And um, you know, I, I just want to say it's 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 not to take away space for for the car. Yes, it's really to make it a, a, a oh, equitable. Well. Excuse me. So yes, it is. Oh, it's not. It is not. There are options where the, the number of uh, lanes can be maintained. Uh, so we are looking at all these options, and we all have pros and cons. Uh, I just want to say that uh, to be able to provide a, a bikeway facility, uh, it does need to be completely separated. And so a little bit more about the quick build versus uh, permanent build. So uh, on the left hand side, yes, your left is my left as well, <laughs> uh, is a, an example of a quick build. Uh, you can see some intersection improvements here. Uh, you can see some painted uh, curb extensions. So by this we uh, paint and, uh, and bollards really reduce the crossing distance for, for people so, and, and help uh, drivers uh, know how to turn around the corner, have better sight lines so they can see the, the, the people who are crossing. Uh, it just makes it safer for everyone. It, um, it slows down the, the turns uh, because the, the turns are, are, are tighter for, for vehicles, but uh, there are modeling tools that we use to be able to get it right and make sure that uh, all vehicles can actually make the turn. Uh, and you can see the after um, image here. This is when there has been some civil upgrades. And so, uh, you know, there could potentially be an opportunity to do this uh, in a few locations on the corridor, but uh, as I said, it's not a full road of construction, so um, we have to look at how, how much um, the funds that we have to, to be able to uh, do some upgrades of, of this nature. Uh, but you know, with 2028, there are these types of, of opportunities with the, the road rehabilitation that's upcoming. So the quick build toolbox includes uh, some of these elements. Uh, so, as I said, there needs to be separation. Um, the picture on the top left is showing curb stones. Uh, we've been diving a little bit more into uh, looking at what, what space we have, and we think we can actually fit uh, low walls, which are not pictured on, on, uh, on this slide, uh, but they're a lot taller, they're wider, uh, people seem to find them more comfortable. Um, Accessible bus stops, so this is very important as well. So uh, if you put in a bikeway um, to be able to, uh, um, uh, either the bus has to come to the curb and uh, cut through the, the, the bikeway, uh, which is not preferred. Um, and for, for major uh, bus stops with a, a lot of activity, uh, we have tended to put uh, this Zipla platform. So it, it is a, a rubber type of platform that is temporary in, in nature. Um, on the, the top right is an accessible loading zone, so other types of platforms that we've installed, uh, these are more permanent in nature, uh, made out of asphalt. Um, and so, you know, someone with a uh, mobility device can load directly at the uh, level of the sidewalk. Uh, for the entire corridor, we're, lo we're looking at signal upgrades and coordination of, of the signals along the corridor. Um, we, <coughs> the um, city is, is doing some upgrades now to the corridor, and any changes that would come uh, would be, uh, the signals would be adjusted. We are also looking at left turn calming. Uh, so this is a little bit hard to see. There's a, a pink arrow uh, that is showing the movement for, for vehicles. So uh, if you see the little kind of beehive uh, <laughs> bee, uh, humps in the middle of the road, uh, the city has highlighted uh, these left turn calming, um, uh, uh, this left turn calming initiative where uh, you have it's almost like little speed humps uh, that guide the car around these, the cars don't want to drive on these little these bee humps. Uh, and so it really helps uh, uh, vehicles to do the, the, the proper turn and have better sight lines again so that they can see people who are uh, crossing, people who are uh, 
crossing by foot or on, on bike um, to improve safety uh, again. So this is something that we're looking at through the, uh, throughout the corridor. Uh, and as I mentioned, curb radii, curb radii tightening, so uh, trying to reduce those crossing distances on the side streets. It's now time to pass it to Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I can talk. Um, so I'm with the public consultation unit with the City of Toronto and our, our work is to gather feedback and uh, kind of be a bit of a liaison with the project team and the um, different city divisions that we work with. So I'm working with Karina and Cyan on the uh, Trithui Complete Street. Um, and as Karina said, we're um, just finished up the phase one of the public consultation uh, in the spring and there'll be a phase two design options coming. Uh, later on in the fall, and just to say that um, we we heard we heard feedback in the first phase specifically from some of the intersections along Trithui Drive that this um, residents association in the, the area we are here heard things about um, you know congest congestion um, and pedestrian safety, um, low visibility for um, blind spots for for left turns because of bends in the roads and. Uh, parking suggestions. So we we've we have gathered a lot of feedback, and we want to keep um, hearing from you. And uh, we we can have a few minutes of questions with the whole room. But another thing we have is a an aerial map of the street at the back here, and we have posted notes. And so you're welcome to uh, kind of identify specific intersections or places on the street that you really want the project team to know uh, about. Um, and uh, and that way we can kind of gather feedback from the, from the community as a whole. So uh, we we had a, a time frame for feedback for phase one, but I, I I just want you to rest assured that the feedback that we are collecting this evening will feed into uh, this this project and this process. Uh, and so we will record it and uh, we will be using it as part of the, of the feedback for this. Here. <laughs> on the connection points on the upper left, um, connected to Pine, the Pine Street extension, and then in the lower right hand corner that connect to Eglinton. What does the dash line mean in time, or like the scope of that effort? will be happening in the fall with a very similar timeline to this project. So it would be uh, starting in the spring. Uh, phase two would be for uh, implemented. Sorry, this needs, also needs approval at, at council, so it's always pending that. Uh, so that is uh, for the West and Second Connections. And so we're not, I'm less familiar with the timeline, but I'm happy to report back on that. Uh, I think it's also planned for a 2025 installation, but I'm not exactly sure when the consultation is happening. So there are, uh, we're looking at different options. We are looking at different options. So there is one option that maintains four lanes for most of the corridor. Uh, the, most. most of the corridor. So uh, there is one area where it's, it's very tight. So unless we can find some funding to do some civil work just uh, in the north of Black Creek, uh, all the way to around Paulson, is that where we're traveling? Clear, clear view. Uh, that would be a three-lane configuration. Uh, mm -hmm. But we are still... So it will take away the traffic. Excuse me? So it does take away the traffic. For that one. For that one. So we're Which going takes down. it away altogether because it slows everything down. No, that, that is one of the... That, that is, uh, the That's the point. Is Slow it down. Yeah. It's supposed to be safer. Yeah. You've heard of uh, you guys have those uh, signs. Uh, slow down. Uh, slow down. Uh, 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 yeah, I, I, I'm going to suggest that we try one question at a time, so that we can hear from everyone. 
is here. And, uh, and we'll get to your questions, just let's be respectful of everyone's comments. Yes, sir. I'm just asking, if it, there's 994 lanes, has Doug Ford agreed to this? Because he's come up with statements, as I'm sure you've heard, that he's going to put in legislation that you won't be able to well, that Thank you, Councillor. Okay. So, uh, Karina? Yeah, so just uh, to... we, we have heard uh, some statements. We have not received okay. any. I haven't got a clue as to what you're saying.
you know, there's so much change in the city within 10 years. Uh, so now we have a near-term implementation plan uh, that's over uh, three years. So consultation was recently done for that. And uh, the corridors that were selected are what we're consulting on in the coming years. Yes, uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Bob Murphy. I reside here on Cthulhu. I'm also with the Toronto Community Bikeways Coalition and a former outreach worker here in Weston. So I get I'm in touch with the, our residents and, uh, that live on these streets. And what we continuously hear is that nobody wants to ride their bike in Weston because it's too frightening. Weston, the home of the bicycle with a little sliver of bike lanes. Now on Cthulhu, we get a lot of traffic feeding off of Black Creek and on Black Creek. We have three major parks. Uh, dedicated raised bullards safe uh, with dedicated bike lanes keeps the cyclists out of the traffic and makes it safer and it saves lives. And if we think any little different that's going to disturb your drive or it's going to inconvenience would anybody here take their grandkids on Trithui and go for a bike ride on there? Nobody goes on it. Nobody uses bikes. You're not looking at well, the streets are empty. You'll hit it. They will come. Traffic gets built up. I do it every year. Here. All year round. You're mistaken. But you're done with your comment. Thank you. Ten cars in a okay. year. So folks, all year again, round. I've got to give everyone an right. opportunity. I have three other people. Good comments, sir. Thank you for your comments. Ahead of, of you, if you'd like to speak, but I've got three other Thank people. You want oh, we've got you, you, and then back to them.
So I know I've seen your hands raised. If you raise them, then I'll put you in an order. Yes. Okay, thank you. I just want to make some points, I guess, in favor of the road changes. Um, this is about connecting the trails that we have in the area and the bikeway on Eglinton and the LRT. Um, you know, it's Trithui. It's a busy, dangerous street. Um, I think if you look at Scarlet Road, um, they implemented something similar where they reduced it down from four lanes to three. So you have the turning lanes down the middle and a constant flow of traffic. As a Toronto driver, I drive all over the place. We have some of the worst road habits I've ever seen from drivers anywhere. We hog the left lane. <laughs> we don't know how to zipper merge, things like that. So you eliminate that by funneling them down, down one lane and then opening it up to turn. Um, so that's the point. Um, as far as Trithui goes, I've seen plans for bike lanes on Trithui for like a decade now. It keeps getting kicked down the road. So it's finally time to just kind of move on and let's build it, especially as the LRT is coming down the road, hopefully sooner than later. Uh, and finally, the irony of that slowdown sign is just amazing. Um, here, put up the sign on your lawn and then leave the street built like a highway where cars are literally going 60, 70, 80, who knows. Um, so those are my comments. Um, and you know, if you want people to uh, not drive and you want to give people options uh, to not drive, this is how you do it. It has to be safe and it has to be inviting. Uh, because um, I like to ride my bike through this area. I find myself driving more than, uh, than not. And um, this location was not inviting for someone on a bike, believe me. Thank you. Hello, I live on King George's Drive. I've been to many of these wonderful meetings and I want to thank you for all the work you put into it. We appreciate that people are thinking of our neighborhood at least and putting some effort into it. I just wanted to mention, it seems to be a lot of the traffic issues to me are because lights are also not in sync. And I really wish traffic would look at how the lights work with the movement and flow of the cars. Because when you are traveling north on Eglinton, you will get trapped in the middle of the intersection between your and um, Eglinton. It's a very small intersection that's just after the major Eglinton intersection. So you're moving with the flow of traffic and then instantly you have to do an abrupt stop because there's a red light right afterwards. That intersection is so close to Eglinton that the flow of the lights should be in sync. So if it's red on Eglinton, it should be red um, so you can't get trapped. And now that the city is implemented, this huge fee for blocking an intersection, I actually feel it's like entrapment because you're not expecting to stop that quickly. So you're putting us in a situation where we're gonna be paying out of pocket for somebody else's, the city's anyway, the city's mistake. And I, I do appreciate that the police officers are manning intersections where they shouldn't turn, but I feel it, this that we're, so often penalizing a community that is not economically strong with fines that are astronomical. So I wish we could start thinking of ways to help people alert them before they turn. So when it doesn't, when it's a no turn sign between 3.30 to 6, maybe lights kind of flicker or something on those signs. So there's an indication, this is the time you cannot turn. Many people are not aware of it, and they're getting dinged all the time. I do want them to stop, but I don't like to see this penal colony that we're turning into. So, if I can add to that question. So, when the city proposed the bike lanes on Eglinton Avenue a few months ago, I moved a motion to defer because the, at the intersection at Keel and Eglinton, staff are working on realigning that whole intersection, Keel and Eglinton, because as you know, you come off uh, Eglinton, you go Keel, you're, yeah. there's one lane of traffic, exactly. and it, it's a nightmare. It's, so they're putting everything on hold until they readjust and realign that whole intersection. They're working with Metro Links because some of those lights were put up with Metro Links, the, the work that they were doing on Eglinton. So we are looking at, so 
The bike lanes on Eglinton is all on hold until that intersection is uh, realigned, make it safer. So I just want to mention that. Um, so you. yes, absolutely, they're looking at that and having you know the turn signals and, and so nothing will happen until that is corrected um, with the city and with Metro Lynx. And Thank as you. far as Paulson, I want to say a big interest in Paulson. We put the lights on for Zoe, so I think that's good news. Not really. Uh, yeah. You've turned down the speed bumps on our street yeah. three times. You asked for the lights. Turned down the the lights. Speed Thank you. That helps. So. You uh, take the roadway for the bike lanes. I don't understand why you don't put them on the boulevards, especially when they're really wide boulevards. So that, that would be an opportunity if there is uh, road work. Uh, this is a, a quick build project, and so we do need to stick between the curb to curb. Uh, if we were to do it in the boulevard, it would have it would be a major civil construction, right? Um, so again, there's, there's opportunities in the, in the future for this, but uh, it's a lot of solution now to be able to have a, a safe connection. Uh, quick build is our option. So I'm sorry, but you'd rather waste the money putting these temporary things down the road when you're terrified of hitting uh, the potholes, the crack pavements. Um, the sewer covers that are too high or too low. I used to write down on the trip. I won't do it now. You didn't like the answer. It's not from the buses that are covered. So it's from the roads. We are trying to make it safe. Uh, quick build projects are very affordable compared to a full road construction. I uh, don't get things so cheap, keep them so good. Excuse me. <coughs> There's a few others oh. waiting, so, yep, go ahead. Okay, so, um, I've lived here for a long time, too. I live on Greenbrook, and my concern, now we have the apartments at the top of the street, this whole development, I've been saying the same thing for years, and I know a lot of people don't agree with me, but I think there has to be coordination of the streets from wherever, Black Creek to Edmonton, all the no turning signs, all the you know the times when you can't turn, uh, the lights like in Greenbrook now, the lights are good that they're on Paulson, but you can't see left or right when you're turning when the cars are coming around that curve. It, it's a blind spot. Like you just have to take your chances and you know edge out a little bit, and if you see the cars coming, you stop. But it's really not a very good intersection there. It's right on the curve. And I am for traffic calming. We do have a lot of traffic calming in the neighborhood. And we do have a lot of, you know, streets that don't want turning on their streets at different times of the day. But I live on Greenbrook. When I'm coming home, I have to be able to get home. I shouldn't have to drive or make turns on other streets where I don't live to turn around to go back to my street. You know what I mean? So there has to be the whole... You know, now that there's so many things going on in the neighborhood, the Edmonton LRT, the new development at the top of the street, I know there's a lot of issues with the cars can't go through Greenbrook. Um, they've been turning on Paul's and King George there. I don't know if that's going to happen. I don't know if that's going to happen. But I just think in a neighborhood, there has to be some coordination. Everything has to flow. Like the traffic has to flow. The people that live in the neighborhood have to be able to get in and out. So, um, thank you for your feedback. I, I, we, we would love to hear more details about that, and we have the uh, aerial photography uh, mapping at the back. Uh, so, any comments with regards to that would be helpful with post this uh, after the meeting. Uh, that way, we can learn more about the issues. Hi. Um, I'd like to echo Kim's statement. I think that corner is a terrible, terrible corner. Keel, you are Trithui. It's terrible. Um, yes. One of the reasons, and this is a comment, that it clogs up there too is south of Eglinton on the Keel, on Keel Street, there's parking on the road on the west side. So what happens is you've got two lanes crossing Eglinton. You probably know this. Two lanes crossing Eglinton, but it siphons into one lane, causing problems. If the parking there was eliminated, and I'm probably pissing 
so we were in the house of God. We're probably getting somebody mad. But what's happening is that that's causing a clot. And there's no coordination. The other thing is, I heard in the report that Trithui is considered an arterial road. An arterial road, I think, means that it has to flow. If there are restrictions in lanes so that in some sections there are four lanes and in some sections there are two lanes, it's going to force traffic into the neighborhood, the Green Hills neighborhood, from your road right down to Greenbrook. And by the way, that's not the only neighborhood. The Clearview side is taking a lot of heat right now because to Trisha's point, there isn't a lot of coordination with the streets going up and down and vice versa. We need to make sure that we don't drive traffic from the arterial road, the major arterial road, give it a heart attack and force everything to run into up the other streets. That's my comments for now. Here, here. Just one more question. Um, will there, a, is there going to be a study once you do build this to see um, if what the take up rate is? And if if the take up, if, if you could tell us what the take up rate should be, um, and you know how often do they put them in and then take them out, or do they always leave them in regardless of take up? So our, our projects are always monitored. Uh, we, we gather before data and after data. Uh, and so, with, especially with quick build projects, we have the opportunity to make adjustments. Uh, so we are committed uh, for 18 months uh, at a minimum to uh, make adjustments to what's been installed. Um, and so uh, I, I, I can't comment on, uh, there, there's no target for uh, the number of cyclists that we are targeting. Uh, that's not what we, we're, we're directed to do. We are directed to provide a safe facility and typically volumes really increase tremendously by likely hundreds of percent uh, increase. And so uh, we report on those. There is a project web page that we post those to. Uh, there is um, a mailing list for anyone who's interested. Uh, and so we, we, we announce that. Uh, if, if you are not on the list, uh, please go to the website and ask to be on it, because that, that's how we provide updates. There you go. There's just two or three things. Many years ago, and I've lived on Paulson now 50 years. I don't know the guy that's lived here 28 years, but we're not close. Uh, Paulson Road, when they, 30 years ago, made no left-hand turns, I've had to use Clearview Heights to go around, come up by the gas station, then come down into King George's, around the park, and into my driveway. In the last 10 years, I've been getting the strangest looks from the people who live on Clearview Heights. When this old man driving a Cadillac comes up through their neighborhood, they want to know what the hell I'm doing there. And I'm just trying to get in my driveway, but you won't let me make a left turn. I was on planning board for this area, again, many years ago, and Keel Street came in, the fact that it bends around your road and goes up. And the whole idea back then was, okay, we're going to tear down five houses on Keel Street, we're going to tear down the garage that isn't there anymore, and then we're going to tear down what green, it used to be Green Hills Pharmacy, and we're going to make that road straight. So Keel Street won't have a turn in it, other than a little curve around to get to the other side, but it won't be the way it is now. I think that thing's been kicking around for 50 years. And, and uh, what they've got on the table now, I don't know. But it's been a problem. That, that little piece of your road, it never, never was really designed for that. The other thing is, on to Three Drive, behind that, the center now that has the self storage, they now have tr track trucks. It's a parking lot for trucks. The person that's driving the truck brings his car in, so he's on that road. He parks it in there, he takes the truck out. That truck is now on that road. 
He brings a truck back, and that truck is now on that road. And then he takes his car out, and that, that, that car now is on that road. There's at least 500 trucks in there. They don't go out every day, but there's a lot. The other thing is that the bus company built their, their bus terminal in the back, and all the buses that are in this area, I'm talking right now north of 401, they park in there, and they, pick, they come down, they come down, they wind up, they, they, they turn in by the police station, so they have to be on to three drive somewhere. And they come in from Jane Street, they come in from Hill Street, you know, seven o'clock, they're all over the place. Uh, then the, the, uh, the other thing is that they're also the post office, and they're running out of there. And God knows how many people are going to come and work when, when in, in the, the yards when they finally start having that subway. The other thing is, there's now a proposal for an apartment building on the corner of Eglinton, or on, Hills, uh, on Eglinton Avenue in Van Crestville. And it's 18.5 times coverage. That's 47 floors. Now, how, 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 how we're, they're, they're, they're not parking for everybody in there, but that's going to create problems. And that's going to create more people, and more people are, are going to you know, need, need the roads. And, and that's not far from Tithuri Drive. And if they could just take that left-hand turn sign down off Paulson, it'd make my life a whole lot better. <laughs> I've got, uh, sorry, I've got the... Yeah, just a question about um, sort of the little area just west of sort of that Martin, Martha Eden Way area. Um, there's quite a few apartment buildings and there's a crosswalk. Um, I'm really curious about how you're planning to slow down um, traffic when there's not an actual light, like the lights at Black Creek, and then the next light's all the way at Brookhaven. So any, in what are the, what are the interventions? May I ask my question, please? Um, what are the interventions you're planning to do in that sort of bend of the road? Thank you. I can answer that. Um, so with the quick build approach, uh, we can use paint to narrow the lanes. Um, the narrowing, narrowing of the lanes helps slow down vehicles when they're making those bends. Um, we, all, we use uh, simulations to run um, different vehicles to make sure they get around them, but we narrow them through paint and uh, bollards to basically create a very narrow space for them so they end up having to slow down. Because we know when we have wider lanes, uh, vehicles without motor vehicles, motor, motor vehicles end up traveling faster, so that's one of our tools to use to help slow down um, water vehicles. Um, yeah, I think that's one of our uh, primary tools that we use. When was the, the TIS so, done? Sorry, can, can I speak? Can, can folks, we've got, I know those at the end have questions. Please raise your hand. I know this is my meeting, it's a residence meeting, but I'm going to jump in and, you know, put some order to it. So go okay. ahead. Thank you. Um, I just, on uh, behalf of Green Hills, uh, again, thank you everybody for attending tonight's meeting. Uh, to the point that gentleman made about the truck traffic, no enforcement. Uh, we've been pressing to get enforcement of trucks, not only on Tithuri, but on the side streets. And for the people who are criticizing the turn, the no turns into Greenbrook, no turns into Paulson, the alternative is to get non-stop truck traffic at rush hour at between 3.30 and 6.30 at night and 6.30 and 9.30 in the morning rush hour. So we support the no turns on Greenbrook, on Paulson, on those streets to stop those trucks. For example, not only trucks, the delivery trucks from UPS, all those, the post office are going 60, 70 kilometers an hour on Greenbrook, on Paulson. They're out of control. So we're for enforcement on Trithui, on Greenbrook, no turn on Greenbrook, no turns on Paulson, and to protect, and we're also concerned with this proposal, not against bike lanes. We understand what you're saying, but you want your child to be able to use a bike. We're just concerned if the, if the traffic is diverted onto the side streets again, especially truck traffic. That's our main enemy in this 
neighborhood is the truck traffic is out of control. And these terms, these restrictions, have, have helped us survive on Greenbrook, on Paulson. There was a comment here opposing enforcement of, of uh, restrictions on Paulson. We press for that because there's a lot of kids living on Paulson. There's a lot of kids living on West Acres. We, but we want to help them by stopping these high-speed cars and trucks from going on Paulson on Greenbrook at rush hour. So that's been our concern. Thank you very much. Okay, I have, uh, if anyone wants to raise their hand if they've got further questions. Yeah, I was just curious when the TIS was done for this uh, project. Yeah. TIS being traffic infiltration study, is that what you're... Well, doing? you guys are in this industry, so you should know what a traffic impact study is. So yeah. that's why I said TIS. Okay. So with, with our projects, with the quick build, uh, we're, we are looking said at all the signals and all the impacts on the corridor. Uh, so at our next next uh, phase of consultation, you'll be able to see the traffic impacts uh, that we'll be able to share. But it really depends on the proposals that we're bringing forward. Uh, so we're looking at the existing conditions for the corridor uh, and looking at the impacts of, of our proposals. So uh, we'll be able to discuss that at our second phase of consultation. Is the narrowing of lanes really the only tool that you're going to be using? Because when I think about 50 kilometers an hour, 40 kilometers an hour, but the average speed is almost 60. And then I think about you know Avenue Road, where the whole eight lanes has been reduced to 40 kilometers an hour. Um, what are the other tools that you're thinking of implementing? I, I'm not asking for speed cameras, because that penalizes mostly the people in the neighborhood, if that, but I know you have those solar-based sort of speed Monitors, watch your speed. But like, what other tools you looking to use? Uh, yes, watch your speed is definitely an option. As I mentioned earlier, yes, reducing the speed limit is also an option. Uh, just the fact of having a, a bike way is a, a way to reduce speeds. The narrowing of the feeling like the street is narrow, narrower, even though it's, it's just a reduced distribution of the juices. Uh, that does uh, typically slow down the traffic, and, and, and we, I, we know that people need to get uh, to the 401, and, and, but they need to do it in uh, a way that's not you know, speeding through the area. I know sometimes it's very congested and it can't go fast, but uh, in the hours where it can be, uh, you know, at, at night time, we've seen that you know there, there are more issues with, with speeding. Uh, and as you said, like the, the 85th percentile, which is the average speed on the corridor, is around seven, eight kilometers above uh, the speed, the posted speed limit. So uh, that is something that we can do. So, uh, yeah, you have one follow up The uh... Is it like the one that's on Scarlet, where they're, you know, colorful and at designs, or is it just a very plain white, you know, piece of plastic, or, or whatever the case? Yeah. So, uh, as I said, the, the, the design is, is still in progress, but we think there is space for those low walls that can be painted. Uh, so we often work with the local community and local artists uh, to be able to uh, bring a bit of uh, life to these concrete barriers. Uh, that, that, that hasn't been confirmed yet. We need to confirm where the barrier is before we reach <coughs> artists, but uh, there, there may be that opportunity. Okay, uh, okay. I'm going to take last uh, question, Councillor. Uh, we'll have remarks. And we have an opportunity at the back to really look at the current roadway as it exists. And uh, some of you, with the comments you've made earlier, we can take a look at those particular intersections. So. Uh, last comment. It's okay. It's okay. I don't need a microphone. No. Uh, somebody earlier on, I think it was Scott, made the uh, asked the question about left turn lanes at Trithui and Black Creek. I mean, we don't have to go very far. Uh, Jane and Weston Road, uh, Weston Road and Lawrence, where the intersections are very, very similar. If you were to sit in the parking lot at that park on the corner of Trithui and Eglinton, during rush hour, you could count 
for, at infinitum, how many people pull into that parking lot and make U-turns? How many people will make a U-turn at Greenbrook? How many people will make a U-turn at Paulson? There is a way of making that intersection safe. It's going to cost money, though. But if it's safety you're looking for, that intersection has also got to be cleaned up. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We refer to uh, Eglinton and Kilroy to Trithui. Uh, now I'm talking about Trithui and Black Creek. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, that's not, that's not very safe, that intersection. No. Yeah. And, um, you know, when the question was asked about putting the bike lanes on the boulevard, uh, the answer was that when the road gets reconstructed. So I guess my question would be then, why is we wait until that happens? Why do all this work and then we're going to reconstruct the road? Same thing happened on Lawrence Avenue. We're doing water main um, work on Lawrence and all the lanes are closed. And you want to put bike lanes, but it's all under construction. The road isn't going to be resurfaced and for another three years. And we're doing the... So I think there has to be a better coordination, you know, coordinating projects. When you do sewer work, then you do the road. You, do, you resurface the road when you do that. When you do this, you should all do that. So I like the idea about the boulevard because I think that will make a big difference because you have the bike lanes, but at the same time, you would, you know, uh, have the lanes. But, um, Are you talking about the boulevard? Yeah. yeah. When you say well, the boulevard, some well, uh, some kind of space behind the sidewalk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's something. It's something to look at. I think, and and uh, you know, but as far as truck enforcement, I mean, it's hard to enforce drugs, right? You have the police officers here uh, giving tickets. It's so hard, even though you have these restrictions on road of turn or no trucks. Uh, unless it's enforced by the police, it's very difficult. Um, so you're going to get that. And you get a lot of truck traffic in the area. Now, as far as you know, that turn on Paulson and the speed hump, we, first of all, the speed humps were asked from the community on Paulson. Everybody said no. So the thing is, is not, that not the reason, the, please, thank you. Um, the thing is, is that the reason we're here tonight is that the meeting that we held in June, I had three people that attended the meeting. Three people. And the city staff was ready to put that report through. I said, no, no, wait a minute. There has to be more people in this area that's interested. And that's why I insisted that we have this meeting tonight. And I really appreciate everyone coming out because at least you're able to hear the presentation, give comments, and the staff will take all those comments and issues and yes, we have to realign Eglinton and Kiel. There are some adjustments, and I think the staff should hear that. Um, and, and that's why we're here, because bike planes don't always work on every street. So you have to change the, the, the design of the street to make it work. In some areas, like Scarlet Road, you mentioned Scarlet Road. Um, yes, that was, that was a four-lane traffic, now it's two lanes and they have the, the dedicated bike lanes and we have local artists that painted the, the, the and, and actually I live on Scarlet Road so I see that every day. Um, but um, so there's different ways of doing it but what's really important is that you're here and I can hear what the residents are saying, their concerns that they have and any of the recommendations and so, you know some of the comments you made tonight will be part of the report and at the end of the day, there's going to be another meeting. This is not it. Tonight was a meeting to hear from you on what your comment. And I really appreciate coming out. And I want to thank Larry for allowing me to have this meeting tonight because I was very concerned when I only had three people attend this meeting. Uh, you know, nobody attended. Um, you know, and that's why I wanted to make sure we had it in this community because I do care about this community. I do care about Greenbrook. I do care about Paulson. I do care about Trisui. My son was born on Trisui, so I know the area well. Um, so thank you for attending at the back. You'll see the maps. You can put your comments in. And please, if you have any further questions in that, if you can either email me or email the staff so we can incorporate, because I need your comments for whenever and if ever the report goes to council, because we don't know 
what the status of bike lanes are going to be because as was mentioned by someone, the Premier, Premier made a, uh, an announcement. I don't know where that's going to go. But um, anyway, and the RRT, hopefully, hopefully it opens soon. I predict, I predict in March of 2025. And the reason I say that is because the Metrolinx is going to give us three months notice. So we're in October. So can't be in 2024, October, November, December. So I think in January, you're going to hear three months, and hopefully it's March 2025. Hopefully. So if you want to go to the back of the room and give some comments on the map. And Larry, I want Larry, as the, the president of the Residents Association, to say a few words. Uh, I just want to thank the hardworking city staff for attending this evening and giving us your wisdom. You know. And also Audrey from the counselor's office as well. So thank you very much and everybody for attending. Okay, thank you.